Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So today I'm back out here cleaning along this fence line where our new fence is going to go basically right where I'm standing, like right here. So we've got a few trees that are less than eight feet from where our new fence is going to be. So we're cutting them down. That way we can fit a tractor and a brush hog through here and keep this fence line cleared. So I know I've got at least three more trees down there that need to come out. And I know there's a couple that are like exactly eight feet from the fence and that's just going to get smaller over time as the tree grows. So I'll probably take those out as well, but let's go ahead. I want to get this tree cutting done early in the morning while it's still cool outside. <laughs> Right here's where the new fence is gonna be. And that tree is less than eight feet. It's about seven foot nine away. That's pretty tight. I'll probably have to take that out. This one's seven foot eight. So I know those two need to come out. All right, that one is about eight foot nine. So that one's good, okay. I didn't really wanna cut that one down. And that one's about eight foot seven. cover right off of it. Well, it's got a cover over the lens and it sent that thing flying. So I hit this GoPro with the uh, chainsaw and it knocked the protective lens cover off of it. And there's what it looks like. It's shattered, but I keep spares of these. So I've got another one I can put on.
man, that looks good. I mean, except for all the limbs that are all need picked up, but I mean, it looks pretty good. All right, I think I got all the trees cut down, all the limbs trimmed that I want. So come through here with the tractor. We'll start getting this cleaned up. All right, my brush pile, it starts right here and then it goes all the way back there. It's probably at least 12 feet deep. I'm gonna see if I can crush it with the tractor and see if I can shrink this up. See if I can make a little bit more space for all the limbs on the next section. made quite a bit more space I think push it probably eight feet so the only thing left to do here is just to pick up these logs some I'm saving for firewood and then the oak logs I'm saving to grow mushrooms in and I think after this I'll have about ten of them so I should have enough for that project so now I'm gonna move on to the next section I've already trimmed limbs, probably three quarters of the limbs with the pole saw the other day. There's also a cherry tree that had fallen down here in the woods that I'm probably gonna harvest for firewood and I've done a little bit of cutting around this section. So I don't think there's too much more to do. I just wanna go through with the tractor, pick up all the limbs, brush hog, and then see what we got left. Well, I got y'all dirty. I didn't even think I was going to hit you. All right, I think we got a pretty good start on this side. There are a few trees that are gonna have to come out here and I don't think I'm gonna mess with them today, but I'll show you what we're looking at. So you can see these bigger trees back here, they're closer to the fence line that's back here. And this one has grown up and it grew <laughs> pretty big and fast. And it is a honey locust tree. 
and it has these huge spikes, you know, thorns that are on there. So this honey locust tree is definitely coming out. Anytime I've got an excuse to take one down, I'll do it. And this one's too close to the fence. Now I have a lot of people tell me how great honey locust trees are, how beneficial they are to wildlife. And they do have benefits, but you know they sell a thornless variety. Um, so if you're looking at putting in honey locust trees in, definitely put in the thornless variety. All the benefits without the thorns. And then over here, we just have a bunch of small trees that have grown up and they need taken out. So too big for me to brush hog, but I'm just gonna cut all these small trees down. They're all pretty much like three inch diameter probably. And I'm gonna cut all them back till I can get to the bigger trees that are in here next to the old fence line and they'll make nice shade trees. Now one other thing we have here is, this is a cherry tree, that black cherry that has fallen down. And I'm gonna have to come back here and salvage this for firewood. So I've already cut the end of it off. I got it here, but there's quite a bit of firewood right there. And that's been a recent fall down probably in one of these storms because the leaves were still green on it. But I'm gonna save all that for a, another day. I'm gonna go up to the workshop. I've got a few other little jobs that I'd like to get done today. So while I was working this morning, Rebecca was out in the orchard and she was picking up all the peaches off of the ground and you can see she's got an entire tractor bucket full of peaches they were all you know they're all going bad they all got bad spots on them these aren't this isn't good fruit to use and we have so many peaches we've been trying our best to make sure it doesn't go to waste so Rebecca's been picking them like every day and then taking them to work she's been taking them to family we've had our neighbors come over a few times to get peaches and um, Rebecca spent a few days ago, she spent an entire day just processing peaches and trying to store them. And we just have so many, we just can't keep up with it. And these aren't, you know, these aren't good enough to do anything with. So we're going to give all of these to the pigs. So right here is where we've been throwing the fruit to the pigs. And the only thing you can see, you might be able to make out some peach pits in there. All the fruit is gone. So... The chickens can get in here as well, so the pigs and the chickens, they eat every bit of it. And you can see, even though it's not very good fruit, it still doesn't go to waste. So right now, I scared them. The pigs are taking a bath, staying cool. So their pig water, the float that's in here, has not been shutting off. It's been overflowing. I'll take it apart see if I can fix it. You got a little access panel I got to take off. Anywhere you got a garden hose that switches over to some type of pipe fitting, it always is prone to leaking. That's why I hate to take this apart. <laughs> it's because it wasn't leaking. Guaranteed to leak after I'm done with it. Oh, you just got mud on my face. No wonder it ain't working. It's turned sideways. So this is what's inside the tank. It's just like a little float valve that uh, should shut off the water, but it ended up unscrewing and it got like sideways so it wouldn't actuate properly. All right, I got the float put back together. This barrel is full of water, so when I turn the water on, it shouldn't try to fill it up if it's fixed. All right, we're pressured up. I don't hear any water flowing. I think we're fixed. So we've got a lot of rain here lately, and with that rain, we've had thunder showers every day. And right here at the pig pen, there's this big tulip tree right there. And we had one of the limbs break out of the back side and it fell down and it is hanging from the tree. And the base of that limb is probably at least an eight inch diameter. It's a very big limb, but it has a section where there are three limbs and they are hooked and sitting on top of one of the lower limbs. So it is caught up in that tree. It's not fallen out. Uh, Rebecca was afraid that it would fall down and hurt the pigs, but I think it's jammed up there pretty good. I don't think it's coming out anytime soon. 
so I'm not even sure how I would get to it. It's so high up there, I'd have to have a man lift or something to be even able to cut it out of there. So I think we're just gonna leave it for now. And this winter I may rent a man lift to do some tree trimming around the property. And, and if I do, I'll get it up here and we'll get that limb cut out of this big tulip tree. And we, we'll, we'll trim up the tree as well. Cause it's definitely, it has several dead limbs that probably need to come out of it. So other than that, we had a few limbs um, in one of the maple trees up front that has come down. And then I know in the back woods, back, back by our hunting blind, there's actually, there is a tree that had fallen down behind the hunting blind, didn't hit the hunting blind. But um, there's another tree down in the woods back there. And I'm just gonna let it sit until winter time and I'll try to collect it for firewood. But that's all I'm aware of at the moment course that cherry tree that we looked at earlier uh, where I was clearing that's that's all the storm damage I'm aware of there could be more I haven't walked the entire property yet so I pressure washed these pipes probably three weeks ago with the intent of you know getting these all painted up and I haven't done anything with them so today I'm finally going to at least get the rust converter on there and then after that I can come back and I can start painting these up but these are going to be our fence posts. So I can't put any fence in until these pipes are all painted. So this is the rust converter I'm using. It's called Osfo. This is uh, basically a phosphoric acid and it combines with the rust, the iron oxide. It turns it into like iron phosphate or something like that. It get, makes an inert layer on the outside of the pipe and it keeps it from rusting again. So I've been at home for eight days now and haven't left. I've tried to do projects that I can do with the stuff that I have on hand, not make trips to the store and just kind of, I don't, I don't know, just kind of settling in to what we're doing around here and being here full time. But tomorrow I'm finally going to leave. <laughs> Our nephew has a birthday party tomorrow, so we're going to head over there and hang out with them all right that finishes up all of the big pipe this is 16 10 foot pieces of the two and seven eighths that's what i'm using for fence posts or the brace fence posts so once i get these all painted i can go ahead and start building our fence braces out on this new section but that was the last of my rust converter right there i'm gonna have to Go to Ace Hardware and pick some more up before I can do these other posts I have behind me. Or these are actually probably, some are going to be posts and some are going to be the horizontal braces. So I sort of challenged myself this week to try to stay at home and not just run out every time I needed something. And I'm trying to do a better job of maybe planning ahead and when I do leave and make a trip, I can pick up everything I think I need for several projects. Um, I kept on getting into the whole problem of every day it was I, I ran out of something I ran out of diesel fuel I have to go to the gas station I ran out of screws or I ran out of this fitting I needed this and it was just a constant every day I'd have to run to town to the hardware store or to the farm store and yeah I'm just trying to I guess get myself a little more organized and kind of plan ahead for things and kind of just work with what I have on hand, I guess. If I if I don't necessarily have something to complete a project for the day, I'll just I'll end up doing something else and um, try to get done and work with what I have. And just trying to minimize all the running around. I waste so much time. Uh, like a home improvement store is an hour away. So if I have to go to a home improvement store to buy lumber, um, more than likely I'm gonna be gone for like three hours. So I'm just trying to minimize uh, all the little trips that seem to happen daily and I made it eight days without leaving here which seems kind of weird um, now that I kind of go back and think about it that I've been here and not even like gone down the road so that being said I'm already planning out 
everything I want to do this month. And of course, trying to put in this fence bracing that, um, for the rest of the fence, that is one of the things. Um, the other project, I want to continue around the, the barn corral and close off that one side and get that pine tree area closed in. So that's another project I'm planning on working on. And then I still have the solar. Uh, I actually started putting the solar in. I haven't showed any videos on it yet, but I've got some additional solar to, to put in and I would like to get that all finished up and running this month. And at the end of the month, I'm gonna plow up half of this front field and we're gonna plant this south part of the field. We're gonna plant that in our pasture grass. Uh, probably plow it up into August and plant it at the beginning of September and get half of that front pasture planted in the perennial grass that'll be there year round. And we'll leave the warm season forage for them to graze on, um, you know, as, as long as they can. And on top of that, uh, we'll probably be cutting hay out in the hay fields and we'll be cutting some of this warm season grass, uh, trying to either turn that into silage or bale it for hay. But um, that's a lot. That seems like a lot. That's a lot to try to get done in the next like four, four and a half weeks. But um, now that I'm doing this full time, I think, I think I can do it. I think I can get it tackled. But I think that's gonna be it for today's video. So I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.